club was founded in 1819 by the then Foreign Secretary Viscount Castlereagh. Although he never sat on any committee uh, in the club, he, he was the founder and the, uh, the idea of the Travellers was, was his. Uh, and basically when people used to travel and were offered hospitality by foreign diplomats abroad, Castlereagh wanted somewhere to be able to return that hospitality uh, when people visited London. Well, when, when the club was founded, they adopted uh, what we would nowadays call a logo for the club, um, and they called it a device. And they chose the head of Ulysses, or Odysseus, as the, uh, the, the ultimate traveller. But when people walk into this library, they, they say, ah, there we are, above the fireplace, that's good, there's the head of um, Odysseus. But it isn't, in fact. It's Mercury or Hermes with the winged helmet. Yes, well, the frieze um, very much epitomizes the, uh, the interests and um, activities of the first members of the club. Um, this is the frieze from the temple of Apollo at Bassae in uh, we the Western Peloponnese. And here in this book, which he published in 1860, some quite considerable time after the, uh, the archaeological excavation itself, we have a rather wonderful engraving in which you can see the temple as he would have seen it with the sculptures from the frieze just scattered on the ground where they had fallen when the temple was, I think, repeatedly damaged by earthquakes. This is a so-called Regency metamorphic library chair. And uh, the reason it's called metamorphic is that it metamorphoses into a set of very solid steps, uh, which can be used quite easily and safely to get up to the shelves. Um, the interesting thing about, about this piece of furniture is that it's uh, a great feature of many, many libraries, but it has a very special significance for the Travellers Club in that we know it as the Queen Mother's Chair. Uh, the reason is that for many years the Queen Mother gave a party in the library for her staff. Well, this is one of my favourite party tricks, and I find that it works very well as a way to demonstrate uh, the library's dummy book door, uh, which consists of all these false spines, uh, which gave members the opportunity to invent some um, idiotic book titles, uh, many of which they had remembered from their school days, and it's a sort of um, schoolboy level of sophistication in terms of the humour. For example, one of my favourites is uh, just here, the Tragedy of the Cliffs by Eileen Dover. It always amuses me when members come into the library to show it off, in a sense, to their guests after lunch or dinner and they will march down the library, passing all the real treasures, and get to the door and say, this is our wonderful library. And it's the dummy, the dummy books that for many people um, are, a real, uh, are a fascination and um, something that they, they will remember about, about the library. And I can only say that it's a much 
cherished feature. The death of the physical book is very exaggerated. And it's very much like, I think, when television was invented, um, everybody said, well, that'll be the death of radio. And it wasn't. And I think when e-books came along, for a while there was the novelty factor and the great convenience for people who travel a lot and uh, that whole side of it. And as it happens, in the 24 years that I've been here, not one member has ever said to me, I wish we had a computer terminal with the catalogue here. They're all quite happy to look at the very old fashioned um, card index. And they like it, they like the whole sort of old-fashioned approach of it. Life evolves, as you well know, and if it didn't, we'd still be living in caves. And I think the important thing is that whilst we respect the traditions of the club and how it was founded, the club still lives in today. It is important that what we do is keep the club relevant for today's society and requirements.